Warning! This video was created for educational purpose. The main goal is to provide scientific and public health related information in an understandable, easily digestible manner, with a portion of humor. Might contain disturbing disease related images and information. Hello and welcome to another video. Do you remember the 1997 movie Face Off, in which the two main characters get their faces exchanged as part of a criminal plan? Needless to worry about any further spoilers. However, there is more to the topic of face transplantation. Let's dive right into it, shall we? Face transplant is a treatment option for some people with severe facial disfigurement. A face transplant replaces all or part of a person's face with donor tissue from someone who has died. Face transplant is a complex operation that takes months of planning and multiple surgical teams. The procedure is performed in only a few transplant centers worldwide. Each face transplant candidate is carefully evaluated to help ensure the best possible results in appearance and function. A face transplant may enhance your life, but it is a high-risk procedure. You and your transplant team can't predict exactly how you will look and how your immune system will respond to the new face. You'll need to take special medications, immunosuppressants for the rest of your life to reduce the risk of your body rejecting the transplanted face. Some of you might ask, why is it done? A face transplant is performed to try to improve the quality of life for a person badly disfigured by facial trauma such as war or industrial injury, animal attack, burns, disease or birth defects. It is intended to enhance both appearance and functional abilities such as chewing, swallowing, talking and breathing through the nose. Over the past few decades, great advancement have been made in the field of facial transplantation as per the experimental and clinical studies on trauma and congenital malformation. Nowadays, vascularized composite tissue allotransplantation allotransplantation means the donor and the recipient of the graft are two different persons is considered another treatment option in patients with complex craniofacial defects. In 2005, facial allograft transplantation was first reported in France. The functional and aesthetic outcomes of facial transplantation are highly encouraging. With a dramatic improvement in functional status, patients have a restored ability to make facial expressions such as a smile and to perform various functions such as smelling, eating, drinking and speaking. However, the risks and benefits of facial composite tissue allotransplantation involving mandatory lifelong immunosuppression, similar to that in the case of a renal transplantation, should also be considered. To date, only a few active facial transplantation programs have been implemented worldwide and as many as around 50 procedures have been performed. However, there is a growing interest in these programs. The procedure in itself is very time-consuming and consists of referral, evaluation, informed consent, screening visits and procedures, team meets to discuss eligibility, pre-operative planning, patient placed on transplant waitlist, face transplantation surgery, post-operative follow-up and care. All of these steps can take up to two years and more, with the last one being a lifelong follow-up. Facial transplantation costs more than the transplantation of other solid organs, including the heart. The cost of a facial transplantation is approximately equal to that of multiple conventional reconstructions. But for candidates of this procedure, it is priceless to be able to alleviate psychological and physiological suffering to achieve a dramatic functional recovery and to realize lasting hope for social reintegration. Because of these positive outcomes and the ongoing refinement of the process, facial transplantation has eventually become a first-line treatment option for the reconstruction of patients with extensive facial disfigurement. Got fucked up, eh? Ain't that fucking grenade, eh? <laughs> it's 
brain is fine, but he's gonna be pissed when he wakes up, eh? And what the cuck could happen in India when he lost his legs? While the preparation and grafting phases are highly hemorrhagic, in other words accompanied by a high blood volume loss, for which a massive blood transfusion may be required. The mean operation time is 19.1 hours ranging 15 to 28 hours. Most of the patients in this series present with severe graft edema after surgery. They also encounter complications at the intensive care stage unit. These include renal insufficiency, acute respiratory distress syndrome and jugular vein thrombosis. In addition, they are immunocompromised and then are vulnerable to opportunistic bacterial infections during the post-operative period. For facial transplantation procedure to succeed, a three-dimensional virtual model of the face is generated. Furthermore, it is mandatory to carefully perform a vascular workup prior to facial transplantation. With one of the final preparatory steps, the facial allografts harvested from the donor being dissected. The initial experience demonstrated that the facial transplantation is a feasible surgical modality. It is indicated for patients with gunshot injuries who had previously undergone multiple conventional surgical reconstructive procedures but failed to obtain favorable treatment outcomes. It has been reported that the functional and aesthetic outcomes were very encouraging with good motor and sensory recovery after transplantation. Patients achieved a recovery of phonation to such an extent as to talk normally. They could smile, chew, swallow and blow normally but still had difficulty in pouting and kissing. Frequently observed episodes of acute rejection, as predicted, are easily controlled with increased systemic immunosuppression. To summarize, at present only a limited number of patients have undergone facial transplantation not only because there are no established studies of the transplant's long-term outcomes, but also because patients need to undergo lifelong immunosuppression and receive revision constructive surgery in case of treatment failure. According to current scientific knowledge, it is now clear that the incidence of cancer is significantly higher in populations that are immunocompromised, including immunosuppressed, or suffer immune dysregulation. This is further supported by the following abstract from CNN Health. First phase transplant patient, Isabelle Dinoir, dies at 49. She was 49 years old. The delay in announcing her death was explained in the hospital statement. In accordance with the will of her relatives, no obituary was published in the press in order to protect their legitimate privacy at that painful time, the statement said. Though the hospital did not provide any details on the cause of Dinoir's death, French media reported she succumbed to complications from her most recent operations. Dinoir suffered a rejection of the transplants last winter and lost part of the use of her lips, Le Figaro, a prominent French newspaper reported Tuesday. The heavy anti-rejection treatment she had to take contributed to the occurrence of two cancers, according Le Figaro. Surgeons performed the operation when Dinoir was 38 years old, after her face was mauled by her dog. The medical marvel created a wave of controversy at the time, with some questioning the ethics of transplanting a face before attempting reconstructive surgery. French surgeons Dr. Jean-Michel Dubernat and Dr. Bernard de Vauchel decided to carry out the operation to stitch on a nose, chin and mouth from a brain-dead donor and opted out of the more traditional reconstructive surgery route. Dinoir was given the lower part of a face taken from a woman who had committed suicide. A year after having the procedure, Dinoir declared, it may be someone else's face, but when I look in the mirror, I see me. The surgery paved the way for other transplants involving varying combinations of facial parts performed in six other countries, including the United States, 